the Pianis codec is what I'm presenting today. It's a speech and audio codec for ad hoc acoustic wireless sensor networks. So my name is Tom Beckström, and I've done this with, uh, with uh, several co-authors, Mariam, Pablo, Megna, Steha, and Seed. And I am from Aalto University, and uh, half of the co-authors are from Ilmanar University in Tunisia. The motivation here, so why sensor networks, is that when I want to make a phone call, let's say I want to call my mom, the first task I need to do is to find my phone. It's always lost somewhere. Uh, so find, finding of the phone is a distraction from talking to the person I intend to call, to talk to. Uh, so what would be much nicer is, is if I could just say, computer, call mom. And I, I wouldn't need to care which device performs that action. So I really wouldn't have the distraction of finding the device, but some of the devices nearby would perform that action. And also multiple microphones in the neighborhood could then be used to improve audio quality. So that's why we need ad hoc wireless acoustic central networks. And of course, these, these devices, so we imagine that they would all be devices which you already have. So this would be a software only change. So that would be also a affordable approach. So what we what we want to here do? So the idea we have is that we want to do a the simplest possible codec, which has the uh, features which like they basically do a proof of concept for ad hoc sensor networks, showing that we can do coding and and uh, it does improve quality, and it should be a platform for for future tests and therefore. Uh, kind of allows design of realistic tests. Um, to make it like usable, uh, it should have reasonable quality. So we don't we don't aim to be the best in the world. Uh, so not state of the art correct. It should be good enough uh, while being simple, uh, and it should be good enough in both multi and single channel scenarios. So. There are, of course, these classic codecs, and EVS and Opus and uh, all these, which have really very high quality in a, in a single, single channel or single device scenario. But now we would like that we can improve quality by adding more devices. Uh, there are also some examples of uh, distributed source coding methods, which use lots of devices, uh, but they fail to reach the same quality in a single channel scenario. So they, they are far below in quality in single channel, whereas they are good when they have like 10 devices. Um, we want to do it with a kind of platform that like PyTorch, I mean, don't really care which platform is, it's just something which many people can use and then we can integrate it with machine learning. Uh, I do feel compelled to mention that it's a, academic evaluation license. So I don't make any claims about patenting because that's a minefield I don't want to go into. And just as a kind of why, why, don't, why, why are not, is none of the existing codecs sufficient? So there are codecs which are efficient and there are codecs which are low complexity, um, but none of them basically really get, get proper benefits from other channels. Um, there's a bit of discussion of how much uh, we are better than these in that, that sense. Uh, but at least we have a simple structure for testing. So that, that's at, at least a bit kind of clear. Uh, and these, uh, all of these codecs are rather big chunks of code, which, which have uh, complex interactions between components. So uh, when you do changes, you never, never know what you get. But so instead, our structure aims to be really simple. Uh, so we have input sound, 
lots of sensors and each of them have a, a independent encoder. And so the encoders don't talk to each other. They just transmit data out. And then there are independent decoders which decode that. And only here at the channel merge block do we then like look across channels and try to get a good signal out, like high quality joint estimate. Uh, so this, this uh, lack uh, avoidance of interaction here makes the structure simple and, and efficient, like low complexity and low bandwidth in, in this, uh, this sense. Um, then in the channel merge, uh, there's a video, is with the delay estimation, delay compensation, and all the channel post filter. I'll talk more about them in a second. Uh, the signal channel codec part is a classic TCX type, uh, so based on MDCT, uh, and uh, most of it is basically de derived from an EBS type structure, and also, also the Bluetooth structure is what I understand. Similar, uh, only the perceptual model is derived, like approximated from the EBS with the neural network because EBS has a time domain perceptual model. Uh, and uh, that brings then extra complexity, which we don't, we don't want to have. Uh, so the biggest difference now for, for multi-channel operation is that all quantization is deterred. So at least we get some benefit. So if, if two devices would quantize, uh, let's say, pitch to the same integral value, there would be no benefit from that. I mean, we would get twice the same, same number. But if we are deterring, then we get approximately the same number. And then you know, looking at those two approximate numbers, we can make an estimate of the true number. So we get a better estimate of the true number. Uh, so that kind of deterring is therefore essential to make use of the multi-channel information. And then it's the entropy coding and arithmetic uh, mixture models and arithmetic coding. Um, so this this is uh, I have to say that this deterred quantization and entropy coding is not really proper distributed source coding. So with optimal distributed coding methods, you get better efficiency, but variable accuracy. So really dynamic accuracy based on a perception model, which is based on the signal. We don't have that for distributed source coding. At least I'm not aware of such methods. So that's why we have been unable to use these proper distributed source coding methods. But that's just kind of for future work. And also important is that we optimize everything end to end. And that has really been shown that that's uh, useful for the overall quality. And that's what, where we actually get some benefits over the sacred art single channel connection. The channel merge, uh, so note that the, we, we are working now in the MDGT, MDGT domain, which is a real value domain. So typical beam forming would be based on uh, face rotations. We don't have face. So, so this is a different world now. So uh, instead we did, we did uh, like a simple approach. So TDOA, uh, so the DCT of the cross spectrum and then find the peak there, that gives the delay estimate. And then we, uh, that frame which arrived earlier is delayed to match the later frame. And, and then you know, we, we do that by mathematically taking cross correlation between the basis functions of the MDCT. And then it's simple MMC, MMC estimate for the final value. So there's no, no tricks in this. The, 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 this is perhaps the base where, the, where there will be most to improve now in future works. Uh, results. Uh, let's, so this, first of all, this is libre speech. So we train on the training corpus and evaluate the evaluated corpus, of course. Uh, and then kind of we evaluated across bit rates from 8 to 32. And the lines here are the medians and the solid the field areas are 95% quantiles. Uh, let's first look at the PSNR. So what is actually striking here is that it's a straight line. 
uh, and that's actually different from other codecs that we, we really can scale scale to any bitrate, and, and, and always the SNR improves. Um, so that's actually the biggest benefit of the current, current design. Um, we are better here than the EVS with this PSNR estimate, but should note that the PSNR is measured with the perception model we have in this codec, which was an approximated model. So I would assume that the EVS model is, EVS perception model is better. So uh, this actually should be higher. Um, so this is a kind of, does, does, does not indicate it actually would be better. The better is to look at the PESC values. And here you see that we actually go above the EVS at high rates. Um, and, and that's kind of, I think, a true difference that we, we actually are higher here. The differences are very so small that we didn't bother to do a perceptual test, so obviously subject test because I didn't expect to see any statistically significant differences. The story is almost saturated. So here we are better here, but I would not also look to, to put too much weight on that. So mostly I'm kind of this indicates to me that we are actually better at high rates. So interesting Of course, the novelty here was the, uh, the multi-channel performance. And now we did a test for two channels. So we have uh, either a joint, so two microphones joint or a single microphone. So we um, kind of the idea here is that the, the microphone one is close to the source and then the, uh, has less background noise, so higher SNR. Uh, and big two has, is further away and has more noise. Then the comparison is that we have only the far away microphone, but have a higher bit rate. So the sum of the bit rates is, is the same as the signal channel chase. So this should give us a kind of a fair comparison of whether we get the benefit from two channels. And you know, this reflects how the, the vision is that we, the far away microphone will be a smart device, a, a kind of smart speaker or something. And the, this one will be then a, a kind of wearable, for example. And when we look at now this number, so SDR is 1.7 better, PSNR is two points better, so the 2 dB better, which actually could improve, and this, this, this is clearly audible. And PESC story values are not, not too much changed. Um, and we have kind of turned this over the whole evaluation set of libre speech. So even if the standard deviation is rather uh, high, then this should be a statistically significant improvement. As a conclusion, so this is to my knowledge, the first complete implementation of the codec for ad hoc acoustic sensor networks, which gives like good quality in a single channel mode, but gets a benefit from uh, multiple channels uh, or better benefit, more benefit than, than the other codecs. And, and simultaneously also has low complexity. And the kind of biggest, biggest like uh, improvement on top of uh, the state of the art is, is the entry model, uh, so the source model, and all other modules are basically baseline implementations. So the intention here is that this would then be a platform for further research. So we can kind of use end-to-end -end modeling to or end-to-end -end optimization to improve any other modules or, or improve any of the existing modules. And that's it. Thank you.